Hi, and welcome to my COVID-19 challenge where I am going to try to do 19 posts across all of my social media, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, where I'm inspiring other people to find other things besides the news and as I call it, the black box of negativity to uh, become inspired about. And so today's is related to this beautiful artwork behind me. In the summer of 2019, I was gifted these beautiful prints. I really didn't look at them and I didn't read about them at the time because I was kind of busy being a breast cancer surgeon, but I dropped them off in Jerome, um, Arizona at Soil Dove Studios to have them framed. And um, if any of you have ever had anything framed by Sally, you know that you don't get to pick anything. You drop them off and she frames them exactly as she sees fit. And I kind of said, well, I've always done that with my patients. They're not going to tell me how to do surgery. So if you're really good at what you do, and Sally is, she did the beautiful framing for all of these uh, prints. So these prints were gifted to me by Beth Aim Schwarz, and she's a beautiful, beautiful woman. Um, she is an American visual artist, and she did a lot of abstract art, which I'm going to show you uh, one of her originals at the end of this clip. Her paintings incorporate words, symbols, representing philosophical concepts shared by people of very different cultural views. Her daughter, Julianne, is also an artist in New York City. And... Her main belief in so much of her work is that when we heal ourselves, we heal the planet. No better time to heal our planet than now. And the way that we begin to heal our planet is by healing ourselves. So if you're interested in learning more about her actual story, there's a fabulous video, which I will put the link below because I don't have enough um, subscribers yet. So get your friends to subscribe and then the links can be live in these videos. So. The link to her video is called Reminders of Invisible Light. And um, it also, she has a book that kind of parallels and talks about her development and how she's done her artwork over the years. And Beth is a beautiful soul. I absolutely, absolutely adore her. She is just an amazing, radiant woman who I think that her artwork is um, so spiritual and so inspiring and way before it's time because the pictures that I'm going to, the paintings I'm going to talk to you about were done in 1995. And this series is called the 11th hour. And it's a continuation of her work. She had done work in the early nineties called the wounded healer. Again, a very, um, important topic right now, as we talk about healing the healers who are giving of themselves every single day. And she titled the series, uh, the wounded healers, um, the search, uh, she titled it the wounded healers because she was looking at people who were giving of themselves to care for others. And I think that maybe on another post later, I can go back and look at her work, um, from the wounded healer and maybe even go to her studio once the, uh, travel bans are lifted because she's a beautiful studio in her home, um, down in Scottsdale. So the story of the 11th hours is a series of 15 paintings. I have six of the prints here. And they're based on a myth in which the earth and humanity are on the brink of extinction. Kind of a scary foretelling thing right now. Eventually they're saved through human enlightenment. And she visualized symbolic mantra that is a figurative group of archetypal images that invite viewers to look into themselves and find their way. So each painting has an eye, which is E-Y-E, the eye, also the eye of ego, and then the eye, A-Y-E of affirmation. And what's been really interesting is I didn't really look at these before I sent them to get printed, uh, to get uh, matted and framed and getting them back this week in the midst of, um, all of the chaos surrounding COVID. It's given me an opportunity to actually read about them and look at them. And, you know, Sally's had them for six months and it was because her life got a little bit, uh, what she was usually does with humane society kind of slowed down. So she was able to do the framing. So a lot of synchronicity and pulling all of this together. So we're going to go back and look at the very first one in the upper corner here. It's called the beginning. And it's about the moment of the big bang and the words that are written on there 
our ultimate reality and we cannot see nor comprehend. And I think right now, none of us can see or comprehend what's happening in the world. We just know that things are changing in a way that we could never, ever even imagine. And she talks about this as an illusion, a deception, um, and in Sanskrit, you know, the appearance Maya, and it's a deception, which unenlightened minds are taking on reality. And for me, looking at the first painting on the top, um, and looking at that we cannot see nor comprehend, none of us can see or comprehend how our world is changing. And I think throughout this series of paintings, you're going to find out that, um, we have the opportunity to heal within and then hopefully heal the planet. The second painting, which has three eyes, the eye, the E Y, the I, the I, as in the letter I, the I, the E Y E, and then the I, the A Y E is a visual metaphor recognize the importance of seeing. And it is really about several billion years ago after the big bang, um, ultimately how we formed the galaxies and the world that we live in. And now it's about this coalescence or growing together and uniting and merging into a single body group or mass. And I kind of see that as the growing, coming together as a collective consciousness in the world. And that is a really awesome painting. And I absolutely love it. I, uh, got my husband to help me hang these this morning so we could actually do this. So one of the things that I've done is I've taken every painting that hasn't been hung and found time to hang it. So the next painting in the corner with Buddha and the Lotus rose quietly, quietly. And Lotus was spelled L O T O S. And, um, it was from a poem from Bert Norton. And the Lotus is a symbol of purity and perfection because it grows out of mud, but it's not defiled just as Buddha is born to the world, but lives above the world. And because the fruits of the Lotus are said to ripen when the flower blooms, just as truth preached by Buddha bears immediately the fruit of enlightenment. And the picture also has three of the chakras underneath it overlying the earth and the fireworks, um, are being displayed in there uh, over the landscape of the earth and three of the seven chakras, the highest chakras hold enlightened beings in stasis between a state of Nirvana and the Buddhist orange landscape. And it's about harmony in a time of disorganization and all is calm and time is still again, something that we're all feeling is the stillness because a lot of the freneticness of the world, you look at the streets that you see, um, videos of and pictures of, and everything is quiet and still painting behind me, which is very three dimensional to me because some of the paint is flat and some of it is actually glossy. So you get to see some depth in charging the species at the 11th hour. And, uh, in the return Schwartz portrays the hero heroine returning from, uh, from the tranquility of personal awakening. So they're coming back from this personal awakening, um, into a vortex of the world of being. And in Sedona, we all know what vortexes are. I think they happen to be good. So she invites the viewer, um, to follow the example of those humans who have traveled before us on a spiritual and cosmological passive enlightenment. So I think in times like this, when everyone's questioning what's going on in the world, um, looking to others who have found enlightenment and found greater purpose in the world besides the cars and the homes and the things and the stuff and, you know, and find meaning in just being and being in the tranquility. And it's, um, really about quietly, quietly, um, finding that centered space again and the connectedness and the chakras. And you'll see it when you see it up close, it's absolutely beautiful. Next one is called Reconcil Re Reconciled Among the Stars. And in the picture, you see the eye with the stars, the, um, the stars, which, you know, we see the stars here in Sedona so beautifully every night I can see, you know, Orion every day. And I know what season it is based on where it is on the horizon. And, uh, several of, um, the other astrologic signs are shown up in our sky at night. So reconciled among the stars depicts a connection between the earth and the sky, between the external world, the physical reality and the internal world of spiritual truth. And the seven rays connect the earth and sky. The seven rays have a cosmologic reality and seven heavenly bodies and a biological reality in the seven chakras. And, uh, 
for me, this is really about how we connect heaven and earth. And if you think about her basic premise that if we heal first as individuals, we heal the planet. Um, it just shows a connectedness between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. And I think for a lot of us right now, if you haven't had a spiritual center and if you haven't connected with what really matters in your life, suddenly every single person is being faced with an adversity and given that opportunity to figure out what truly matters in your life. And through adversity comes spiritual awakening. And then the um, sixth of the paintings is Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. The hour is 12 o'clock. The Buddha is tiny in this. It's a symbol for spiritual enlightenment, recedes in the importance here because um, the sentient beings are awake. The cords, which connected in the last painting, are no longer bind beings to the physical world. The sentience spreads from the earth shores into the galaxy. And what was interesting about this that actually um, makes me kind of, um, I don't want to say gives me goosebumps, but um, in the story, it talks about the fact that when 2,000 beings have transitioned, 200,000 beings, sorry, 200,000 beings transition, then it's an opportunity for a collective consciousness to awaken. And watching the predictions of those souls who will transition through COVID, um, maybe this is our opportunity as human beings to recognize what really matters in life. And if those beings were um, transitioning at this time to awaken humanity and mankind, um, just maybe, maybe we can awaken as a planet and collectively come together and recognize that all of our actions have a reaction and how we treat other people matter. And uh, once and for all, actually heal the planet um, while we heal ourselves. This, uh, this whole process of having these show up um, this week has been really um, emotionally charging for me because the story that is being told through this was written in 1995 and was brought through this beautiful young artist who um, is now in her ninth decade of life and is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. And um, I'm just blessed to know her. And hopefully you will get to know her through her video and check out her artwork because she's amazing. And thanks.